Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be talking about guard rings in a PCB. What are they, where do they connect, and why do you even need one of those things? Now, guard rings are elements that usually wrap around the edge of the PCB, and they are filled with stitching vias to essentially mimic a chassis ground. And indeed, they are often exposed on the top layer and on the bottom layer, and they can connect to a shielded chassis. I'm gonna show you what they are, how to use them, and a couple of misconceptions around the use of guard rings. Let's get started. If you look at any printed circuit board, you'll see lots of copper pour everywhere, both on external layers and in internal layers. But one thing you might see around the edge of a circuit board is a guard ring. This is a region of copper that has a lot of vias drilled into it, and it usually spans through all of the layers in a PCB. The reason for this guard ring is pretty simple. It is to connect to the metal shrouds and pins on connectors, or it's used to connect to the shielding in a metallized enclosure. One of the big reasons this is used is for EMC and for ESD. It provides some measure of ESD protection if used correctly, and of course it can function as a good way to connect to the chassis, which then brings everything to the same potential in the PCB, and thus you basically create a big Faraday cage around your board. If you look in some RF PCBs, you will actually see the same kind of structure near the middle of the board wrapping around certain groups of components. This essentially follows the same principle. It's being used to apply shielding around certain groups of components, and if exposed through the solder mask, that copper can then connect to a shielded enclosure, and you're basically creating all of these little Faraday cages around the board. The idea here is to shield different sections of the board from electromagnetic radiation. So now that we know what a guard ring is, let's hop onto the board and we can see how to use them correctly and, of course, how to connect everything to a single potential in your PCB. So let's draw out the typical guard ring structure on a PCB. Let's just suppose I have a rectangular board and I'm going to draw out the typical guard ring structure in red. Now this guard ring structure typically expands all the way around the board comes back over here to the power input, and then you may have a little section coming over here, and then this goes over to your main ground region, and then here you have all of your components. So this is the typical drawing that you'll see online when somebody is discussing guard rings. Typically, they will also then draw in a bunch of vias around the edge here, the idea behind these vias is to apply just the right spacing so that you prevent any electromagnetic radiation generated inside the board from emitting from the edge of the board and then, of course, impacting your EMC testing. Now, over here at the power input, we generally have something like a connector or we've got some holes where wires can come in. Then power comes in over here and goes to all of the components. Then you have a ground plane internal to this section of the board. That ground plane, of course, carries the return current, goes back over to the power input, and then you've completed all your circuits. Now, this all makes sense, and the reason this makes sense is because, of course, if you only have components in this area and all your routing is in this area, then as long as all your routing is in this area, all your return currents are only going to be in this area. And so you don't really have any chance to create radiation by jumping across this gap between these two regions of the board. Where we now have to modify our understanding of this is when you start to bring in connectors and signals on those connectors that are again, then gonna come into this region of the PCB with our components. So when should we use this type of structure as I've drawn it here on the board? Well, first of all, in this power input, we've assumed that there's no earth connection. So when we don't have an earth connection, we have to take this guard ring and ground it somewhere. So of course we just connect it over here back at the main system ground. That ensures that we don't have any big pieces of floating copper in the board. And if we don't have any of these big pieces of floating copper, we don't have a big antenna that could potentially radiate strongly and again, impact our EMC testing. Now, what if we're dealing with, let's say an AC input and we have this guard ring connected to a chassis? Well, then we would want to connect that chassis to earth. And so we would actually have some separation here between the power input 
and then our component region in the board. And then that earth connection needs to come in essentially right here near the power input, and we now have an enclosure that is connected to earth. Of course, everybody starts to ask, well, why don't we connect the main system ground over here to this earth connection right here? Well, generally when you're bringing in AC and you bring in that earth connection, the earth and neutral line are already connected somewhere back at your upstream breaker. So I wouldn't worry about doing that here on the PCB. This earth line is not meant to carry any return current or carry any power. And if you provide that connection right here, that is exactly what might happen. The other reason that we have this earth connection here around this guard ring is so that we have a safety ground. That way any ESD that comes in here will ideally hit right here in the guard ring. And then when it hits, it will then be able to dissipate back into earth. Now let's just go back for a second and talk about the situation where we're just dealing with a positive and negative input coming into the PCB and we basically just have one power connection coming in here and connecting to our component region in our board. So how do we use this ring properly? Well, typically what we're using this ring for is the case where we have a connector. So let's just say we have a connector right here. We'll call it J1. This connector could have a shroud on it or a shield on it. So think for example, like a USB connector. There are many other examples of connectors that have some kind of metal shroud on them. That shroud can be used to provide shielding for all of the other signals that are coming through that connector. And that can be done by connecting to this guard ring. So making that connection grounds this shroud around that connector. And what it allows you to do is essentially provide a safe place for ESD on that shroud to then dump into the board without getting into this region with all the components. By providing that here, that ESD is then required to go around this ring and then eventually get back to ground over here in this region of the board. What if we also have a chassis ground? So let's say we have an enclosure and that enclosure is metalized and we need to ground the metal in that enclosure. Well, we can also use this guard ring for that. So this guard ring can connect to the enclosure and that's actually a very common way to use these guard rings. And I showed that earlier in the image of the RF PCB. So in that case, when the chassis connects directly to this guard ring, any ESD on the chassis or any currents that then get into the chassis can then dissipate back to this ground at the power input. Now, one criticism that I see of this type of guard ring is that it basically forms a big loop and can act like an antenna. So what is one proposed measure to prevent that? Well, sometimes you will see that ring broken just like this. They will basically leave a little gap here and that breaks this loop. So any magnetic field pointing out of the page and alternating won't be able to induce a current in this section of the loop. I think a better way to do this is instead of creating this open loop like this, what you can do is extend the main system ground on the next layer all the way out to the edges. What that does is it provides some shielding and really tightly closes that loop through the edge of the board. So that's gonna make that loop much, much smaller. And that's preferable to leaving this big piece of uh, metal here that's open, which could then also act like an antenna. Now, what's one thing we haven't talked about with the use of this connector J1? Well, remember, J1 could be carrying some signals, and those signals need a reference to then bridge across this gap between this region and this region with the components. Well, if you bring ground in with that pinout, then any gap between your ground plane in this region and the ground in this region will be bridged because you're essentially providing a reference alongside that connection. A better option is again, just to extend the ground underneath this guard ring region. That way you won't have to allocate ground specifically to the pinout on J1. The ground reference is already going to exist in the region where these signals come in. And then you won't have an issue with routing over a ground plane gap and then creating radiation. So this is essentially how you would use a guard ring in a PCB that needs to have this kind of protective ground around the edge. And of course, this extends to really any number of connectors. So for example, I could have a connector coming in here, in here, anywhere else, and really the same principle applies. So to make this all a bit more tangible, let's jump into Altium Designer. I'll show you an example of how to use a guard ring in a PCB.
So to show how to use a guard ring, I wanna take a look at a project that I've been updating recently. You can see that we have an ethernet switch project, and this is a project I've shown a few times in the past. And I just recently updated this project with an SFP cage. We'll show this board in a bit more depth in a future video. But for now, I just wanna look at the guard ring. Here in 3D, of course, you can't see the guard ring. The black solder mask doesn't help with that, but if I put it into 2D, you can now see that we have the guard ring going around the edge of the board. And if I just scan through all the layers, you can see that it does exist on all layers. Now, where does this guard ring connect? Well, if I zoom in, you can see here it connects to the main system ground. Just to verify which ground that is, here we have a 12 volt input, and then this is our ground connection coming in with that 12 volt input. So everything is connected to a single ground just the way we like it. Now this isn't exposed through the solder mask when we look in 3D, and the reason is that we're not planning to use this in a metallized enclosure. However, we could of course expose that through the solder mask if we want to, then that would give us that connection to a metallized enclosure if we need it. So going back into 2D for just a moment, I wanna show where the best place would be to connect this. Here, you can see that there are some breaks in this guard ring, and that's okay. There can be some breaks in the guard ring. However, if we start scanning through here, you will notice that on layer three, we actually make a connection back to this polygon here that I have highlighted in the layout. Now, I think a better place to make this connection is back here at the input, as I discussed on the board, rather than making this big connection right here and then having that span over here as well. One thing that we could do to update this is to essentially just move this polygon border back just a little bit, re-pour it, and then that's gonna give us some clearance between the edge of the polygon and our guard ring. You can see we still have some overlap, so we would need to push this up just a little bit more and maybe even redo a little bit of this routing in order to get over to the left side of the board. So there are still some modifications that need to be made to make sure that we just have one good connection in this board between the guard ring and our system ground. But this should show you a good way to use it and of course, the way we draw this out is we just use the drawing tools in Ultium Designer. You can draw it out as a polygon, or you can draw it out as fills, and then assign it to the correct net, and then fill it in with stitching vias, and bam, you have a nice, clean guard ring in your PCB. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to jump into the comment section and let us know if you use guard rings in your PCB and how you draw them out. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a question or a comment in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.